The background of the study is an essential part of your research because it gives the reader an idea of what the topic is really about, its history, and it gives it more context. But it also sets the stage for what you are going to do by allowing the reader to understand what gap you are feeling and angle you are taking in regards to the topic. In this video, I'm going to give you all the steps that you need to write compelling background of the study and you won't believe how simple the steps are. You just need to follow them through and you will have a perfect background for your study. My name is Radu Kanomsa of All Things Academia, where we explore and explain all things in the academic world. This is part four of the proposal component series. So at this stage, you should have your topic, which was the first video, your research questions, which was the second video, and your aims and objectives, which was the third video. If you have not watched these videos, don't worry. I would link the first one up here somewhere and link all of them in the description down below. So just click on those links and get a research topic and perfect research question. But since you're here, I assume you just want to know how to write the background of your study. So let's get started with that. Firstly, the background of the study typically comes before the literature review. Now, I know that some institutions prefer that this background be part of the literature review and some actually separate the two. I think those that advocate for separating them and those that advocate for putting them together still agree on one thing, that these are two distinct things, the literature review and the background. They are not the same thing. The background sets the stage and the scene of the research, while the literature review reviews existing literature and sort of gets the reader the feel of what has been going on within the topic. The first thing that you need to know about the background is that it normally starts very broad and it narrows down to the specific angle that you're taking about the topic. So it will discuss the topic in general, broadly so, and then it will come narrowing it down to what you are focusing on about the topic. So when I speak about this with a lot of my students, I talk about a funnel, that when you see a funnel, it has a wide opening and a narrow opening at the bottom. The wide part is where you discuss the context in the most broad and general sense. At some point, you need to narrow it down and focus it even more better so that the reader understands what exactly you're focusing on and targeting to do. So considering our topic that we came up with in the first video, this is why it's important to watch the previous video so that you can move along in the same line of thought and be in the same page that we are in. So that topic, just to remind those who might have forgot or those who might have missed that video, the topic was exploring first year university students' perceptions of effective of online academic coaching for academic success in South African universities. So now if we consider that topic and then we think about a background, what we need to do is we can start by introducing the general topic to establish its relevance. So here we can discuss how online academic coaching has become a significant area of interest in higher education, especially in the context of global digitalization and increasing online learning options. So for example, we can write, in recent years, online academic coaching has gained traction as an effective way to support students in achieving academic success. With the rise of digital platforms and visual learning environments, students now have access to coaching services that provide academic guidance and support outside traditional face-to-face -face interactions. After establishing the general context, you will now want to introduce the specific area that you are focusing on. This means the specific issue that you are investigating. This is the part where you're basically narrowing the topic to focus more. In the case of the topic that we are using, we want to focus more on the unique experiences of first-year students and the role that online academic coaching has on their academic success. So then this focused narrowed portion can be written as first year university students often face unique and personal challenges as they transition to higher education. For many, adjusting to new academic expectations and responsibilities can be daunting. Online academic coaching presents a promising solution by providing first year students with accessible, tailored support that can help them develop the skills and confidence needed to succeed. Now that you've discussed the topic broadly, and narrowly you need now to contextualize it within the region that you are studying so for example in our case we are focusing on first year students in universities but in south africa so we need to contextualize that within the south african context so when you think about the south african context there are certain things that comes up about the topic that you can focus on 
within that setting so for example we can mention challenges like access to traditional support services we can also mention inequality in educational background and the increasing reliance on online solutions within the country so this is what we can write to contextualize this topic in south africa Many first year students come from diverse educational background, often with varying levels of preparedness for university level work. Limited access to traditional academic support services, especially in under resourced institutions, making online coaching an attractive alternative. However, little is known about how South African first year students perceive this form of support and its effectiveness in helping them achieve their academic success. Now you've explained the topic generally and narrowed and you contextualized it, the next thing to do is just state your research problem. So you want to state clearly the problem that your study aims to address. This is mostly understood by a research gap. In our case, with the research topic that we are working with, we're going to draw attention to the lack of research on student perceptions on online academic coaching, particularly for first year students in South Africa. So this is how we can phrase our research problem. While online academic coaching is growing in popularity, there is limited research exploring students' perceptions of its effectiveness, especially among first-year students in South African universities. Understanding these perceptions is critical for assessing whether online coaching meets students' needs and contributes to their academic development. After doing all of that, particularly stating the research problem, what is left now, which is the final part of your background, is to introduce your aims and your objectives, which were formulated in the previous video. Again, this is why it's important to do watch the previous videos because they get you up to speed to where we are at this point. The reason why we introduce the aims and the objectives at this point is to show how the research is going to address the problem that we've just outlined. This also helps to transition to the literature review where we will go deep into previous studies. This is how we can write our aim and research objectives into the background of the study. To address this gap, this study aims to explore first-day university students' perceptions of the effectiveness of online academic coaching in enhancing academic success at South African universities. Specifically, it will examine the factors students believe to contribute or hinder the effectiveness of online academic coaching, the perceived impact on academic confidence and skills, and any challenges that students experience within these platforms. Now that you've written all the steps of the background, what's left is to just put it together in that order and it will read like a perfect background of your study. So let's put this together and let's read the perfect background that we've just crafted. In recent years, online academic coaching has gained traction as an effective way to support students in achieving academic success. With the rise of digital platform and visual learning environments, students now have access to coaching services that provide academic guidance and support outside traditional face-to-face -face interactions. First-day university students often face unique academic and personal challenges as they transition to higher education. For many, transitioning to new academic expectations and responsibilities can be daunting. Online academic coaching presents a promising solution by providing first-year students with accessible, tailored support that can help them develop skills and confidence needed to succeed. In South Africa, many first-year students come from diverse educational backgrounds, often with varying levels of preparedness for university-level work. Limited access to traditional academic support services, especially in under-resourced institutions, make online academic coaching an attractive alternative. However, little is known about how South African first-year students perceive this form of support and its effectiveness in helping them achieve academic success. While online academic coaching is growing in popularity, there is limited research exploring students' perceptions of its effectiveness, especially among first-year students in South African universities. Understanding these perceptions is crucial for assessing whether online academic meets students' needs and contribute to their academic development. To address this gap, this study aims to explore first-year university student perceptions of the effectiveness of online academic coaching in enhancing academic success at South African universities. Specifically, it will examine factors students believe to contribute to or hinder the effectiveness of online coaching the perceived impact on academic confidence and skills and any challenges students experience in these platforms. Now, lovelies, that is a well-structured background of the study. So what is left now is to go right straight into the literature review. I mean, 
you've already set the perfect scene for it click on the video that is appearing on your screen right now because this is a video that's going to give you all the steps that you need to write a critical literature review that will put your proposal at number one so what are you waiting for click that video and i will see you in a few seconds as i project to you love and grace in a way of second corinthians 13 verse 14.